Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, you've seen my ultrasonic transmitter before. Works on 5 to 9 volts. This is the ultrasonic receiver kit. Uh, you can, you, you can, uh, it works on 7 to 9 volts. There's a 7805 5 volt regulator on it. You can bypass that if you want. The circuitry on both the transmitter and the receiver is not sensitive to 5 volts. The only reason that there's a 7805 on the receiver is so that your output is TTL compatible because there is a comparator uh, at the output, an LM386. Three stage amplifier. Anyway, transmits nicely in its current configuration at about a half a meter. You can, uh, if you know your electronics, you can look at the schematic and you can actually modify it to make it a little bit stronger. So three stage amplification plus it through a comparator to give you a square wave output. Uh, you can also modify if you want to try. It's transmitting at 40 kilohertz on the transmitter side. You can mess that or mess around a little bit and say get between 30 and 50 kilohertz. But the uh, center frequencies of these uh, transducers are 40k. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make the ultrasonic trans or, uh, receiver board, and then we're going to test it. Here's everything that comes with the kit: ultrasonic receiver. A 78LO5 5 volt regulator, 3 2N2222 transistors NPN, 4 uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, 3 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a DIP 8 pin socket, a DIP uh, 8 pin LM386, a PCB custom, and then there are six different kinds of resistors. There are three 330K ohm resistors. Four 180k ohm resistors, uh, four 15k ohm resistors, two 18k ohm resistors, one 5k6 resistor, and one 68k resistor. So all of the resistors are labeled on the board. If you don't know resistor color code, then just use your multimeter to determine, you know, segregate which resistors are, are which. They are all labeled on the board as to what their value should be. There's no polarity. So find out each one. Be very careful not to mix them up. Make sure each value goes in the right spot, solder them into place, then we'll do the capacitors. There's two different kinds of capacitors. The electrolytics, 10 microfarad, and the ceramics, 0.1 microfarads. The ceramics are C1, labeled 0.1U. They're all labeled 0.1U, the ceramic areas, but the ceramic areas are C1, C7, C3, and C4. They're not polarized. They can go in either way. There's no, there's no positive or negative. For the electrolytics, uh, they're all labeled 10U, and they're in C8, C5, and C2. And there is a plus sign on one side of the footprint. Look very closely for that positive, foot, the positive symbol, the plus sign on the footprint. Uh, you'll notice that the electrolytics have a long lead and a short lead. Short lead is negative. Long lead, lead is positive. Don't reverse polarities here. Make sure that the long lead goes into the foot with the side of the footprint with the positive symbol. Look very close. In the case of C8, the positive is on the left. In the case of C5, positive is on the bottom. In the case of C2, positive is on the left. So solder all of your capacitors into place. Then we'll do our regulator and our transistor. Zuh. The 78L05 regulator and the 2N2222 NPN transistors have the same package. They look <clears throat> physically identical. However, there is writing on the front side. There's a flat side and a rounded side. On the front side and the flat side, you're going to see writing. Make sure that you segregate the transistors, the 2N2222 transistors, from the 78L05 because you're going to need to place the 78L05 in this footprint here. It's labeled 78L05. Transistors go in these slots, T1, T2, and T3. Now you'll notice on the footprints for both the regulator and the transistors, there's a flat side from a bird's eye view, and then there's a curved side from a bird's eye view. When you place the components in, make sure that you match the flat side from a bird's eye view to the flat side of the uh, footprint. Don't reverse them. You have to make sure that when you're looking at them from a bird's eye view, that the flat side of the, of the regulator in this case matches the flat side of the footprint. Turn it around, your circuit will not work. So solder those into place, and then we're just about done. Second last step, we've got our header, our socket, and our IC. Now what I like to do is uh, solder 
the short pins facing upwards on the board so that you can actually plug this into your breadboard relatively easily. Now what I mean is what you can do is you can put the, the short sides facing up or the, so the long sides are facing up then you can wire wrap to it your because that's your power supply or you can place the short pins underneath and solder from the top if it's nicely into a breadboard. That's what I'm going to do but you can make, you can make up your own decision based on that. Uh, on the footprint for the LM386, you'll notice on the left-hand side there is a little notch on the footprint. There's a little notch on the left-hand side of the socket, and there's a little notch on the left-hand side of the IC. Make sure that the notch from a bird's eye view on the socket faces the notch on the uh, footprint, so you'll know uh, which way to place the IC notch, in this case, to the left. So solder those all into place, place your uh, IC in the socket, carefully and lastly we'll do the transducer. Lastly the transducer. There's two pads on the board, negative and a positive. The positive is the it should be connected to the pin with a little black header on it. And the negative uh, should be connected to the one with no black header on it. Now what you need to do is you need to flood the board, flood with a, a fair bit of solder. Uh, it should just drain right onto it nicely. Then what you can do is you can either place it sideways, which is what I normally do or you can have it facing up if you'd like. I'm going to be soldering it this way and then we'll test it. You'll notice that the pinout is labeled right here on the board. Uh, pin 1 is DC ground, pin 2 is output, and pin 3 is uh, 5 volts to 9 volts. Now it says 5 volts to 9 volts because you can bypass the uh, 78L05 component. That's the 5 volt regulator. If you're not going to bypass that component, which is regulating to 5 volts, you need at least 7 to 9 volts. You can put 10 volts on here, even 11 volts, uh, if you're not bypassing the 78L05. But in its, in its default state, use 7 to 9 volts unless you want to bypass the 78 5 volt regulator. No, there's no component on the board that's going to be hurt, uh, hurt by uh, adding more than, you know, between 7 and 9 volts unregulated. But I've added the 7805 so that the output could be TTL compatible, which is 0 to 5 volts. Anyway, what I'll do is uh, I'll turn it on. We can test it using my ultrasonic transmitter. I've got my ultrasonic transmitter on a battery right now. If you're looking at the listing, you'll see uh, that I have an ultrasonic transmitter kit as well and a video for assembly. The receiver is a bit harder to put together. It's just more components. you got to be much more careful. But anyway, what I'll do is I'm transmitting from about two feet away. If I go closer, if I go farther away, it gets to a point where I'm about a half meter away in its current configuration, where holding the, bu the transmit button down on my transmitter won't offer me any kind of output. But if I press the button, it'll give me a quick detection here. And that can be useful if you want just to detect ultrasonic. Uh, there's a place on the board that you can actually catch and reamplify the received ultrasonic signal if you want. How the ultrasonic trans tra receiver works is that there's a three-stage passive amplifier before it hits a comparator which is on the uh, which is on the uh, the LM386. Your LM386 is a comparator so you can actually bypass the comparator and keep amplifying that signal so that you can uh, you can capture an ultrasonic signal from several meters away. In its current configuration with uh, unmodified, it receives nicely from about a half meter away, and then it starts to degrade, as you see. And then at which point, as soon as I press the button, I capture something, but it goes away until I let go of the button. Hit, let go, hit, let go. But if I'm if I'm about a half meter away, it transmits nicely and receives nicely. This is the transmitter and receiver ultrasonic kit. Transmits and receives at 40 kilohertz. It can be found at engineeringshock.com or electroniclessons.com. You'll be able to buy the kit separately or together. If you buy them together, you'll save a couple bucks. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone.